there's one particular parametrization, and that's the arc length parametrization. Let's now milk the framework that we have for all it's worth from the point of view of gaining geometric insight into problems. And there's one particular parametrization that is of benefit only for theoretical insight purposes, and that's the arc length parametrization. And it's defined the following way. When you have a curve, you pick an arbitrary point and you call it the origin for the sake of this parametrization. So here s equals zero and you use lowercase s for the parameter. And then you just measure length, standard Euclidean length in the sense of taking a tape measure and hopefully your tape measure can bend very easily and you can follow the curve and then where you find the, that you've traveled one Euclidean unit over, well that's s equals one. And then when you've traveled two Euclidean lengths over, well then that's s equals two. And then when you go in the opposite direction then it picks up a sign, so it's like signed arc length where this is s equals minus one. Okay? And here's an interesting thing. Think back to the lecture when we talked about the fundamental concepts, and I admitted to you that I don't know how to define length, that it's an intuitive notion. And for the curve, it continues to be an undefined quantity that we accept on an intuitive basis. And I could say something uh, that fosters your intuition. For example, if you think that this is an inextensible thread, then you can straighten it out, and for straight things we understand length a little bit better because we can count how many segments we can put in there, right? But this is still problematic because what's your definition of an inextensible thread? Well, it's the thread that doesn't change its length. And what is length? Well, length is when if you take an inextensible thread and you straighten it out, then you can just measure it in the classical Euclidean way. Okay, and what does an extensible mean? Well, it, does that make sense? So it's you're in a loop and you can't really come out of it. So it, I think it helps with the intuition, but it doesn't help with rigor. Okay, so that's arc length. And that's a very specific parametrization and it's completely impractical for specific problems because even if when later on we introduce coordinates and consider the simplest parabola, then we could easily parametrize it with x. It'll be x comma x squared. Now, consider the task of parametrizing it with arc length, where this would be s equals 0, s equals 1, 2, 3. So, the point I'm making is that for specific problems, arc length is completely impractical and that for a simple parabola that is so very easy to parametrize in Cartesian coordinates, I wouldn't even be able to do it on the spot right now to parametrize it with arc length. So, geometric insight, tremendous. Practical spe applications to specific curves, uh, somewhere between limited and non-existent. So keep that in mind. But for geometric insight, this parametrization is tremendous. And I'll just mention one property of it, and then we'll call it a day. And the property that I would like to mention is that when you consider a curve parametrized by arc length, and if the equation is, and I will now switch from the letter U to the letter R that's very common. So we used the letter U when it was a general purpose vector valued function. And then sometimes we interpreted U as velocity, at other times we interpreted it as position, and so on. But right now where we start with the curve, the common term for the vector that describes it with respect to an arbitrary origin is the position vector or the radius vector. Those two terms are used interchangeably. And so, using the letter R, 
makes more sense a little bit when you start with, uh, with a curve and you're doing geometric analysis of the curve. So now we have R of S because we're using this special parameter. And what I will show you, and I only know an intuitive way of showing it, we already know that this points in the tangential direction. But what additional statement do you think I can make about this vector when arc length is used as parametrization? Can I say something about its length? Remember that with a general parametrization, I'm not able to say much about the length of the derivative vector because it depends on the parametrization. It's like velocity. If it's moving faster, it's greater. If it's moving slower, it's less. But now it's a very specific motion, if you think of the motion analogy. So what do you think the length of r prime of s is? It's 1. Yes, it's unit length. And it kind of makes sense. I'll break it down a little bit more. But if you think of this as a material particle moving along this, and s corresponds to time, as well as arc length, then it's really moving with unit speed because it's traveling one meter in one second or one unit of length in one unit of time. Does that make sense? And so it's moving with unit velocity and so this derivative would have to be length one. This vector would have to be length one. But I would like to give you deeper intuitive geometric insight and go back to what I've described as the most fundamental idea in calculus, which is the fact that when you zoom in on any curve, it becomes straight. So let's zoom in on any point on this curve. I'll choose this one. Nah, that one's too special. Corresponds to s equals zero. I'll zoom in on this point. So when I'm saying I'm zooming in on this point, and I'll do it over here, what's the one thing that I need to pay attention to? Well, it's the slope, right? Because as I'm zooming in on this point more and more, and the curve is becoming straighter and straighter, the one thing that keeps remaining, and that's really the one quantity that characterizes the curve at this point, is this tangential direction. So if I'm saying that this is a zoom in, I better give it the same slope as this point. And I think I missed it, and it's also not straight, so I'll try again. I think that's better, right? That's what it will look like when you zoom in on this curve at this point and a modern analyst would say sufficiently far. And they would say, and they would still say, and this is not perfectly straight, but essentially straight. But we're saying, because we're going for the intuition, we've zoomed in all the way and uh, it's straight. That's a better way to think about it from an intuitive point of view. And so this is s equals 2, right? And so now when I consider the same limit, we'll just see that some quantities will make more sense. This would be the limit. I'll repeat it now facing you guys. The only challenge here compared to what we've already done is to catch the moment where uh, we use the fact that s is arc length. So if this corresponds to s equals 2, let's find the point that corresponds to the value of the parameter 2 plus h. Well, it would be somewhere over here, right? Because we've zoomed in so much, this is still a very, very small distance away, 2 plus h, okay? And so this is r of s plus h minus r of s. There it is, delta r. And in the next step, we're going to be dividing it by h. We already know its direction. It's going to point this way for every h because we've zoomed in sufficiently enough. The only question is, what's the length of delta r? What is the length of delta r? The change in the parameter from this point to this point is h. But if we took a tape measure and actually measured this distance, what would it be? And of course it would be precisely h. Why? Because s is arc length. So incrementing the parameter by the amount h means moving a distance 
of precisely h. Does that make sense? So that's a very, very special parameter where the change in the parameter actually corresponds to the distance that you've traveled. So delta r is length h. And we divide, when we divide delta r by h, uh, it becomes length 1 for every h. Fantastic, because we've zoomed in so far in that the line is straight. And so the length of this vector is 1 for every h, so in the limit it's just going to be unit length. So uh, that's QED. That's the intuitive reason for why that's true. true. So now, all that's left is to define this unit tangent. It's denoted by capital T. We'll spend more time with it on Thursday. And it is defined. Okay, and because we're going to be taking further derivatives of it, I'll write that it is also a function of arc length. Is it unique? Almost, but not quite, because arc length parametrization is not unique in its own right. There are two degrees of freedom. One is continuous, one is discrete. The continuous degree of freedom is where I choose the point where s equals zero, the origin for this parametrization. That obviously does not affect anything, right? Because the absolute value of the parameter doesn't matter, it's only the differences. But my other choice, this choice is discrete, is whether I let s increase in this direction or I let s decrease, increase in this direction. And if I let s decrease, increase in this direction, then t will point here, just like it does for the parametrization I'm, I have on the board. But if I decided that s increases in the other direction, then the derivative, then the unit tangent t will point in this direction. So in that sense, in the orientation sense, sense it does depend on the choice of the parametrization, but otherwise it's a geometric quantity. So that's what's nice, because when we discover objects that depend on the parametrization, then what are we really studying? Are we studying the curve? Or are we studying the parametrization? Or are we studying some combination of the two? And the answer is the combination of the two. The curve gives you a little bit, for example, the tangential direction. But then the parametrization gives you a little bit, the speed or the magnitude of the derivative vector. So it's a little bit of everything. But when you choose the specific parametrization, by virtue of its specificity, you've taken away the arbitrariness of the parametrization, and now you're actually studying the curve. And now we have a way of finding this characteristic of the curve known as the unit tangent. So in the next lecture, we'll add the normal. It's called the curvature normal. Uh, curvature, the binormal, and other characteristics of the curve. And the whole discussion will hinge on using this arc length parametrization, which is very special, very valuable for theoretical insights, and completely impractical, I've erased it, <laughs> completely impractical for any sorts of uh, applied problems. Alrighty?